Hello everyone and welcome to Lawrence Plays Factorio Space Exploration and Crastorio 2. And today's um, video is going to be all about the improvements I've been making to um, the deep space science stuff and all of the shortages we've been seeing while we've been uh, getting while we've been working on that. And there's been quite a lot of them. So let's dive in from the top. Last week I started making the Catalog 2s, Deep Space Science Catalog 2s, and I'd, and I'd been looking at all of the uh, construction along here and I'd be thinking, this isn't fast enough, I need a lot more of a lot of these. The, the Deep Space 1 catalogs were coming through far too slowly, the Deep Space 2, 2 catalogs, well, they were coming through just about, but I wasn't doing anything with them. And so, one of the things I needed to do was get, get, get these being produced at a decent speed. And so, to that end, I've been extending all, a lot of these rows of machines and making them, making them just generally bigger and, and just uh, more so. So I've got possibly too many um, of, of the advanced research servers down here making the catalogs twos. I've got lots of the uh, gravimetric facilities making the um, hourglass data, but of course we've run out of naquium cubes for these ones, um, and then uh, and so on up here. I've been just been generally improving everything in order to try and make more stuff, and I've been putting speed modules in wherever it makes sense to. So there's a lot, as you can see, there's a load of them in here. These ones have actually not been too much of a problem. Um, mostly, or at least the the problem they it's problems they've had haven't been caused by these machines. So I've not bothered to upgrade those, uh, and then the, these ones have also been absolutely fine. So no upgrades have been required here. Uh, speed modules here can't speed module these ones, of course, that are making the antimatter or the naquium cubes because they're material fabricators. And as you can see, there's no space to put modules in them. And if there's no space to put modules in, then they don't accept um, boosts from beacons either. So this beacon here is largely wasted. It's affecting these two machines down here, but none of these ones. And so, which is why. I was saying last week I should probably think about moving this one from here to down here and then moving this one from here to down here and this one could go from here to down here and then affect whatever happens next unless it requires more of the material fabricators and similarly above I could potentially move this one up to then get um, get the, this machine as well but as you can see at the moment right now the current problem is that we have a shortage of naquium coming in and that means we aren't able to make the squeezy data here we're not able to make the naquium cubes wherever down here where we're making those and so that's dr drawn everything out to a stop and I'm going to talk about that a bit later on because to be honest during most of the stream, the Naquim was not the problem. There were many, many other problems that I had to beat my head against. And the biggest and most frustrating of these was the uh, was the ion stream. But that's brought into the station over here and then passed through over here to, into here where we're making the um, where, where we're filling up the uh, the magnetic canisters to make ion canisters. So these can be passed around here and then they go into the uh, into the trefoil. Um, science thing over here and, and those can be made and that produces a lot of scrap but that's not the problem despite the fact it looks like we're clogged up on scrap we're not we've clogged up on the on the data cards instead which is which is actually sort of a good thing because it means we've finally caught up with that however the reason we've caught up with it is because this one uses the naquitite crystals whereas some of the other ones like this one use the naquium ingots and that's what we've run out of so that's so we've managed we've been able to catch up because those have stopped but i had a horrendous time getting the getting this caught up because if we look if we get basically i went i came over here and thought, okay, we don't have enough ion streams. I came over here to look into the problem and see, find out why. It turned out we didn't have enough of the uh, the plasma being produced. So, okay, put in a few more plasma. Did I put in more plasma shipping machines? Yes, it looks like I did, because these were all, a lot of these, were, well, actually, no, they are all made by me, so I don't know. I probably did put in some more of these, but also, I went in and slapped a planner over them, upgrading all of the speed modules in all of these machines to, to basically to have tier 3 speed modules in everything, whereas before, I think there were maybe a couple of speed modules and a couple of um, pr uh, efficiency modules to keep the power usage down but I couldn't I couldn't deal with uh, low power usage so I just did did this as much as possible then put in beacons all the way along here as well which are lighting up all all of these uh, all these machines so we're making we are making the plasma now decently fast through these they're running at 460 percent so five so uh five and a half times normal speed which is pretty damn quick um and also i think some no i was going to say some of the modules have been upgraded even further but no these are all tier threes all the way across here and so this is now this these machines were then capable of running more than fast enough uh, but then we ran into a problem where there wasn't enough lithium being brought up for it. So the lithium is being brought up by one of our mixed train systems. We have a train trundle up with uh, a load of lithium and miscellaneous other stuff in it, uh, which all gets unloaded here into this station. And previously there was one one loader unloading e uh, unloading each of the wagons, and that was just too slow. I think that was causing quite a lot of problems. And also there was a load of other stuff being requested, too much... Um, uh, 
low density structures, too much glass. But Tristan's now come in, he's spaghettied in some extra loaders. So we now, I believe, have at least three uh, coming out, maybe four com coming out, yes, four coming out of each wagon. And that means we can now unload the wagons decently quickly, which means we can then send the train back down to Norbis and get it to fill up down at the other end. And down at the other end, some changes were made. So firstly, uh, I upgraded all the belts around here to make, make this run a little bit quicker. Then I moved this belt from coming in straight through up here and then through all these uh, splitters to, to coming around over here. And this sort of effectively increases the priority of the lithium because previously the lithium was right over here. So of all the stuff flowing through here, we ended up rather unfortunately only getting about half a belt potentially being filled from here and then a quarter of a belt from here, an eighth of a belt from here, 16th, uh, th another 32nd of a belt from each of these, which meant these were running really, really slow. Now granted, there were blue belts coming in and purple belts going out, which meant there was there was a decent amount going through at least of the, the uh, low density structures, but we were still getting very, very little lithium being passed through up the, up this side because it had to go through so many splitters and therefore it was just being cut down and down and down. And so to solve that, I made it go across the other side here. And that helped, it helped, um, certainly helped a little bit, but it didn't help enough because we were still only feeding it in at a rate of one blue belt. And that's about the rate it was being fed out at the top because we were trying to fill the buffers. And so if the train, because the trains are spending a lot of their time in transit, that just wasn't quick enough. And so Tristan then came along a little bit later and he's upgraded this belt to purple all the way from here back all the way all the way along here all the way back to wherever it is that we're unloading the lithium um i have no idea where that is but some, somewhere the lithium is being unloaded into the system and it's been it upgraded it to a purple all the way back to there which means it can now flow through much much more quickly uh, and that's so that's given us a nice increase oh here it is over here and that's given us a nice increase in the amount in the amount we can pull through he's also gone over to the uh, actual lithium production area which i th think is not this one. It is here. And he's done some upgrading here. He's put better uh, productivity modules into all the machines to make sure they'll actually run a bit more a bit more effectively, a bit more efficiently. And it looks like we are actually keeping up over here. This does seem to be producing just about enough lithium. So that's kind of okay. And with that boost, as you can see, we now we've now actually managed to fill up all the buffers, at least of the plasma stream. And so you can see this this belt is now running relatively slowly. This is a sort of maintenance speed. And I say relatively slowly. It's running probably maybe maybe a third of the time. I don't know. But it's not it's not running constantly. And the lithium is capable of keeping up. And you see here the, the train has now arrived, and it can now unload decently quickly. The glass is a little bit of a problem, uh, but at the moment, to be honest, that's the least of our problems. I'm I'm, I'm now now we've got the lithium working. I'm very very happy about that. We've got uh, many many other things we need to look into. And so that has, as I say, now managed to finally create enough of the enough enough plasma stream to to fill up all of the uh, to fill up all, all of these pipes. Well, oh, actually, no, this pipe is completely empty, but it is being pumped out over here, and yeah, it's struggling a bit down here. Okay. Maybe we're not actually making plasma stream quite fast enough to keep up with everything else because then I realised we still weren't making the ion stream fast enough. So I came along here and I've done some big upgrades along here, and it looks and, and along here we, I've upgraded all of the speed modules to tier four speed modules. So these machines are running at uh, almost seven times their normal speed thanks to the uh, the beacon down here as well. And so this means we are yeah we're slurping in the plasma stream from here. And that's, this is a, a reasonable supply. The pipe has some in it, um, but yeah, I'm, I'm a bit concerned about that. We might need to boost that again even further. Um, and then the iron stream down here is all being pumped into the station. And actually, the station is getting quite full. That's extremely nice to see because the station was basically empty. Now, this is probably because the deep space science has shut down due to a lack of, lack of naquium. But as you can see, this plasma train is still running very, very busily and, and constantly, just trying to keep everything running that is, has been it, keep in trying and trying to top up all of the things that have been so demanding in the last uh, during the last stream because we were getting through enormous quantities of it but there were a so there are a couple of reasons for this one was as i say down here we're pulling the uh, the plasma the ion stream out here and filling up the uh, the canisters over here to then turn them into the science down here that was pulling through massive quantities of it because for each one of these we fill up um, it takes a thousand ion stream and that's that, that's that's a lot and then each time this runs it will use up one of the ion canisters so every every single one of these uh, these tech cards coming out here requires a thousand ion stream. That is, that's quite a lot. Another thing that we're short of, and this is relevant, I promise, were these, was these data cards, the ones I've been, sort of been called a sort of hypnotic, they're swirly, I forget what they're actually called, they are uh, entanglement data. And so we're, we're short of those, because those are brought in over here and then fed down to these machines, where, they're uh, where they truck through here, and, um, well, it, it uses up an entanglement data every time it runs, and there's only a 50% chance of actually producing the singularity data that we want out of that as well. So it takes two of these cards to produce one singularity data, and also presumably some naquim, uh, no, no, naquim cubes, that's the other thing 
materials needed, and we've run out of those, so that's why this has stopped. But to make those, well, we're, we're having a shortage of those, but they're being shipped over from the energy science, which is just, just over here, so there is a station somewhere, yes, here we go, that is filling up with entanglement data, and this will bring, bring it over, but as you can see, that has now filled up, but while it was trying to produce it all down here, well, we then come in here and we see, oh, here's another place that uses iron stream, so we're churning through lots of iron stream for this one, and this is a 20% thing, so it takes another 100 iron stream in order to make one entanglement data, because 20, 20, 20 to eat for each try, but the try is only 20% chance of working. So to make each one of those on average is going to take 100 ion stream. And as I said, we need two of those to make each one of those data cards. So we're now looking at at least 1,200 ion stream for each one of those data packs. And then, of course, all of the spaceships are using massive quantities of ion stream to fly around with as well. So we've also got the train coming from over here from the uh, um, cloud area, bringing ion stream over to here to refuel all the spaceships that keep coming in. And those are bringing in the naquatite and the hol holmium and all the other things that we need for all these science packs. So there is an enormous load on the ion stream and well, I'm quite impressed that we've actually started to manage to fill this up now, and the train is now idle. But as I say, that is down to a distinct shortage of Naquium, which we'll talk about a bit later. Um, but for the now, for now, yes, over here we had an absolute crisis with the uh, with the plasma production, um, which is now actually once again is is more or less a crisis. Although now that this now that this train has stopped running and these tanks are mostly full, I imagine sometime in the not too distant future we will actually um, manage to fill up all of the buffers and everything will sort of calm down a little bit, at least until we start things running again and start pulling through enormous quantities of everything again. The problem is that when this system is actually running flat out and we do have enough Naquium, having this one train running backwards and forwards from here to over in the uh, deep space science area over here is not actually enough to keep this machine running flat out, producing these uh, these ion canisters. Uh, it rips through them so quickly that by the time the train is ready to set off back over here again, this, this, we've already emptied the tank and we just because we just ripped through it all so so quickly. Um, as I say, fortunately it's all stopped now because we've run out of other things. So there's other places that are causing problems, but I don't know how quite how. We're going to get around that other than perhaps having a either a second uh, ion stream production area that's producing to giving it to a different train or maybe having a second uh, loading space over here so we can have a second train in and, and filling up and i don't know I, neither of those options seem particularly good to me i don't like really like either of them but we might have to go with something like that just in order to allow the system to keep up with the ridiculous rate we're using the uh, ion stream up at. So we could, let's see, we could put in another, well we can't, uh, <laughs> these, no, these these uh, these tanks are an odd, num uh, odd number of squares across, so we can't easily put in another train, we can't put in another train here without putting in a pipe um, on the pump, and that will really, really slow down how quickly the train fills up at as well, so uh, I don't think there's much we can do about that, apart from perhaps have another set of storage tanks and ion streams somewhere else, but as we discussed previously when we are talking about making the antimatter, there isn't really room around here anywhere to put in another train stop. Um, so, yeah, I don't know what we're going to do about that. Um, I guess we may just have to not run the Deep Space Science uh, facility at its absolute fastest, because we just can't keep up, uh, which is kind of terrifying. The next thing to to uh, note or to report on is that putting in all of those speed modules in all of the um, all of the uh, plasma generators and uh, and particle accelerators down there has done ridiculous things to our power consumption. Mark has helped an enormous amount by coming in and literally doubling the amount of power we're capable of generating. So if we have a look in here, you can see that we're now well ign ignore the numbers written up there because I've got the lights on, so it's cheating. But we are now capable of producing 70 gigawatts uh, up from 35 at the beginning of the last stream. And if we look back over the last few hours. You can see how, um, well, the laser artillery turrets are something separate that's also causing trouble. Um, but the particle accelerators, well, they plateaued here at one point. Uh, and this was, I think, when they were all full of um, efficiency modules and stuff, such like. And then they spiked way up here. Uh, when I started when I started running everything absolutely flat out, uh, I put 34 gigawatts. So on their own, the particle accelerators were using basically half of the power we were capable of generating, which is frankly crazy. Uh, that's an, an enormous amount of power. Now this has dropped off a lot now because we're starting to, a lot of our buffers have filled up, but if we're going to be using that sort of amount of power, well it's a good thing that uh, Mark has been expanding our solar areas, let's, let's put it that way. And also there's the uh, rather silly quantities of, um, of laser artillery turrets that uh, Tristan and Mark have been scattering around on Norvis. So as you can see down here, they are, they are using uh, 19 gigawatts. Um, as of right now, the, um, the particle accelerators are only using 14, but that's because most of them have turned back off again. What's quite impressive is that even, even though we have um, a huge number away, we have 78 plasma generators, they're still using less than a gigawatt, and that means they don't actually show up on our graph over here, because you have to be using about... 
three or four gigawatts before you re before you even lift up to a noticeable amount on on the graph before you come out of the noise floor at the bottom. Uh, that just shows how big our, our our factory has gotten, how much power we're using down here on Norvis. And you can see some of these spikes over here. So we spiked way up to 68 gigawatts of, of electricity being produced out of the flat solar panels there. We did have a little bit of a problem at one point. So you can see down here, actually, the tur some turbine generators kicked in, and we started producing power from things other than solar panels. That's that's how much of a problem we're having. And you can you can see the general upwards trend over the last 10 hours of just how much power we've been eating over here. Um, so yeah, it's 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 a little bit crazy. We are using phenomenal amounts of power. And so, yes, we have to thank Mark for uh, suitably expanding that for us, shall we say. I got a little bit distracted and was meaning to talk about this earlier, but um, yes, as I was saying, we are now making Deep Space Science 1 and 2 catalogues at sometimes it's a reasonably good rate. They're being fed over to be put into a train over here, and as you can see, we've, uh, we've generated, we seem to be generating the Tier 2s quite a lot faster than the Tier 1s. So that's something that's going to need to be investigated a little bit, but I think for most of the stream that was down to the rate we were capable of shipping the Ion stream over here at, because this was a very much a limiting factor. Now it seems to be the uh, the Naquim Ingots, but that's going to affect the, uh, the uh, Tier 2 as well. And so, we now have a train. This is being gradually filled up. We can tell that to dispatch and go over to the uh, deep space science uh, area in the in the science park. And when it pulls in over here, it can then unload those uh, those catalogs into the into the warehouse, and they'll get passed through. And there, there you go. We now have we now actually have a supply of the tier ones coming through. So it's a bit. It's, it does seem a little bit bizarre that we have a problem with the tier one, but the tier twos are absolutely fine. Uh, especially as we're doing mostly tier two sciences now at the moment because we because we can. And so those are fed over to here, much the way you'd expect. We've got the tier ones over here. They, they, they'll go in here. They'll, we'll start making the tier one science packs. Lovely. That's that's uh, as you as you'd expect. And then they can be passed over over to here, where they can be snaffled up by these machines, which will then turn them into tier two science packs. And as you can see, we've got a nice healthy supply of those. In fact, this is backed up on the belt all the way down to the uh, all the way down to the science labs because of the because of the sciences we're trying to do at the moment. Um, but once these come in, we yeah, as you see, the, these machines start to make them. The uh, the science packs come through like this. And get grabbed by these machines, which will then eat them up. I uh, did make a bit of a screw up along here. I put one of these inserters outputting onto the incorrect side of the belt. In fact, this is this one doing it as well. Uh, no, no, that one should be near siding because that's a tier two. Sorry, never mind. Um, <laughs> that's correct. One of these was outputting onto the wrong side, so we ended up with a load of tier twos on the same side on the tier one side of the belt. Because I was off in Stardust at the time, Mark was kind enough to come along here and tidy up and 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 take out the tier two uh, science packs that were on the wrong side of the belt. So that's now nice and nice and sorted, and it means that we can start doing the uh, the researches down here. And the one we're doing at the moment, oh, and that is a deep space one research, so it is waiting for those packs to come through. So that so those those will help quite a lot. And so yeah, that's and so one of the big yes, one of the big things I did was get was get the deep space science two up and running. And one the other thing it needed was these naquium cubes, and that, that was one of the reasons I needed to increase the production of them so that they could then be brought over here on a train. And so over in the deep space science area, we have an extended number of machines over here producing them at least in theory, yada yada yada, <laughs> and they'll get dropped out onto the belt here, which passes them over and puts them into a station down here. This this is all pretty straightforward. The only thing to sort of be concerned about here is that we need to make sure we're making enough of them in order to keep everything abs absolutely everything happy. Um, because there are so many different machines and so, so many different things that are demanding the cubes that well, I'm not sure this is going to be enough. However, when this is running, it slurps up so much naqui so many naquim ingots that I kind of hope it, I was kind of hoping it would be enough because I don't know if we can really cope with bringing in that much naquim. Speaking of Naquium, the production of it out in Stardust is is trundling along quite nicely. We have, um, as you can see, uh, oh, we've filled the warehouses along here. Maybe that, does that mean there is a ship about to arrive? And there is a ship about to arrive. It's well, it's still a little way out, but it's on on its way in. And so, in theory, that means we'll probably be able to keep the system running and uh, just load up this uh, warehouse down here. I, I, I guess uh, it's two thirds full. The question is. Will that spaceship arrive before this warehouse fills up? And if not, do I actually care? Um, I'm not sure of the answers to either of those, but the idea is that we want, in theory, we want to have this system running constantly in order to make sure that we have we're producing enough naquium to keep all of the rest of the uh, the rest of the, the uh, factory happy. Um, in order to do that, we need to make sure that we have the ships coming in often enough. And I think we might need one more, possibly two more ships, in order to allow it to run absolutely constantly. Um, but in the meantime, as you can see, the trains are running quite nicely. We've got a nice steady stream of Nacrotite coming out here. Fingers crossed the next train will arrive before this one has finished unloading and has to leave. But in order to make sure that that, that uh, happens and, and keeps happening, I've, I've now finished off that Naquim mine down here, the one that I screwed up last time, um, because I, I, I ran out of rocket fuel and didn't manage to finish it off. So this is now just, it's it's another Naquim mine, the same as all the other ones. We've got lots and lots of drills in here. They've all got speed modules in them. They're pumping it out into a station over here. There is uh, This station is full, so we're ready for a train to come out and grab that and 
in, hopefully, a train will come out and grab it before the um, before all the belts back up and the mines stop running. Because if, if not, that would be a waste of mining time. Uh, but it doesn't look like there is a train on its way down here. Maybe there's um, maybe there's plenty in nearer nearer mines because we do have. Um, is that train? Yeah, that train. Yeah, we see another train's come in and start unloading. Um, but the other mines are all quite a bit closer. So maybe this means I need... Well, there are a couple of possibilities here. One is that I put it... Is, is I have one train go to each mine. Another possibility is that I put in more trains. So there's always plenty to be trying... That are trying to go out to the mines. And just let them queue up here trying to unload. Another one is that I just go, well... As long as this system here is running constantly, who cares exactly how many trains are running and whether the trains are running and the mines are running at absolute peak efficiency? Keeping this system running is the important thing, and that's what I want to want to make sure happens. Uh, and it looks like actually we are now starting to back up, so this this warehouse has filled, and the spaceship hasn't quite arrived because the getting from the edge of one of these rings to the middle of it is further than you expect. It takes it takes uh, quite a long time for it to get there. So it looks like this system is going to go to sleep, which is a bit of a shame. Although that said, each one of these does have its own internal buffer, so it's going to it's going to carry on running for a little bit until while well, this fills up a little bit more. Or no, it's not. It's just going to fill it up to about eight, and then it's going to stop. So yeah, the the system is now officially jammed up and not going to produce any more. But uh, yeah, this is why I think we might need one or two more spaceships. I've also been introduced to a trick you can do with the uh, with the search function if you've got if you've got the right mod installed. Um, we've got we, we've got a search thing here, so you can select entity, choose an entity, and then you can search your current surface or in fact all surfaces. But I just wanted to choose search the current one, and it'll show you where all the patches of um, of that thing are. Unfortunately, you don't seem to be able to sort them into um, into order order of which ones have got the most. But I can have a look and say, okay, this is a four a, a four million uh, Naquatite patch. That one sounds worth having. So I'll click on that and go, okay, it's here. Where is that? And then I can I can zoom out a bit and go, okay, it's right over. It's, it's way over there. So it's quite a long way away. But it is a nice, healthy four point three million patch. So I put a tag on here saying it's a four million patch. And if I zoom out a bit further, you can you can see. Um, there are a few red dots scattered around. The uh, scattered around. There's another one there, for example, that's on a on, on that's another four million. Uh, there's a patch down here. It's eight million, and so on. So, so I've done done the search and I've had a bit of a look around. I've also left the game scanning because uh, I want to find. I want to, basically I want to find some more big Naquin patches. Any that are under sort of three or four million, it doesn't really feel like it's like it's worth building out all the infrastructure to get a rail out there and start mining it, especially if I can find better ones. Uh, and so I've been doing a bit more scanning, and then we found a few more. No, that's rare metals. Uh, there's okay, there's a half a million there, which is pathetic. If we look up here, there's another third of a million. That's rare metals anyway. That says that, so that one. And I have this problem where raw rare metals and naquim are very hard to tell apart. Uh, if on the same screen, it's not too bad because you see that's a deeper purple than this one. So over here, we've got uh, we've got about three and a half million naquim over there. So that's not too bad. If there was another patch next to it, that'd be very worth going for. There's seven million there and another seven, seven million there and four million there. So this is this area is very worth going to. If I grab all three of those patches and feed them into one station, that'd be fantastic. And there's another three and a half million down there. So maybe feed those two together and those two together and have two 10 million patches. So you, you can see what I mean. There's, there's 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 quite a lot of it around, but it's quite hard to find. So I've left the I've left the uh, system automatically scanning this area and looking for more patches. And then as I find them, I can tag them on here, or I can I can run the search again and I can tag them all out here and then just start going out and putting in more mines as and when we need them. At the moment, we obviously don't need more mines because all the trains are here, all the trains are full, they're trying to unload and we just don't have the capacity in the stations to unload it because we don't have the capacity to load for the spaceship. So there's no point in having any more right now. However, given the rate we seem to be getting through Naquim at, I think think we might I might be going to need to put in another copy basically a, a straight up copy of this system so we'll take um, a, an unloading station with battery chargers and uh, crushers and re revampers and, and and so on and have and, and put it in maybe maybe about well, probably probably not there maybe 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 over here or on, on this on this rock or something like that we'll put another one of them in somewhere uh, and then we'll be able to run that out to uh, to over here over, over to the spaceship and load it into the same set of spaceships so it'll still be carried by the same spaceship so then we can put in twice as many and we'll be able to have and then we'll be able to have twice twice as many spaceships because each one will be loaded twice as quickly uh, and hopefully that'll keep the system running at a sensible rate and allow us to keep doing all the naquium stuff at the rate we want to we, we, we wish to become accustomed to, should we say. Uh, so yeah, there you go. You can see the spaceship has landed. It fills up really, it'll fill up really quickly because we've got these superior inserters loading it. Um, 
and already where it already is 20% full. So it's, it's loading it up and unloading it is really, really quick, but there's just so, we just need so much of it that, it, yeah, we, as I say, we do, I think, I think I might need to need more spaceships. But this has meant that the system has now started running again, so yeah. So, so yes, essentially, in order to improve this area, I'm going to need to put in another Naquium processing area, whether I put, uh, which may go on this boulder over here or maybe on this one, or who knows. Another possibility could be to put the, um, the Naquium pulverizers out on the asteroids with the mines and, and, and pulverize it and ship it back in the, in, the, in the crushed form. And that would mean we'd then be able to fit a lot more into the train, so the, uh, so the trains wouldn't need to run quite as, quite as frequently. Um, but that said, the limiting factor isn't so much the, isn't, isn't the train system at the moment. So I, I, I don't think that's necessary at the moment. And having it central is quite nice because then, because then, you've only, you've only, you, then you can easily deal with all of the, um, all, all of the iridium and the, and the pyroflux and so on without having to try and worry about getting that out to, to, to be used for the, uh, for the pulverizing. So I think this system is probably better. It just might need a friend. <laughs> I could put it over here actually. That might be, that's, oh, I, I don't know. We'll think about it. We'll come up with something at some point anyway. And all of that crushed Naquitite, of course, makes its way over to, uh, to Talos, where it's then brought down in another, another train to, un to unload down here into, into, into the warehouse, where we'll, uh, yep, we'll, 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 we'll gradually churn through that. Lovely. Unfortunately, this had broken because I'd made a, I'd made a mistake. Uh, and, and the mistake was that I, ha I wasn't feeding the pyroflux in here um, because simply there weren't there weren't I'd missed out one of these sets of underground pipes so we couldn't have a part underground running from there to here because that is too far so I need to put this in and somehow I hadn't and that meant that this furnace wasn't that that meant that this yeah this furnace down here wasn't running which meant the uh, the holmium powder backed up all the way along the belt up to into here and jammed up this jammed up jammed up all the way up this system and caused caused this to stop producing the powder which meant the powder didn't get fed through everything ground to a halt fine that's annoying but relatively easy to solve so I, I sorted that out but then we had another we weird problem over here uh, and I'm not entirely convinced that I fixed this one because I'm not really sure why it happened uh, but we had a jam on the output belt down here um, because well I'm not a hundred percent sure why to be honest uh, we weren't. We were. We were producing. We produced enough. So much crystal and and powder and, and so on. All all these outputs were, had, had had got stuck down here. Right, because the the inputs over here weren't machines weren't taking enough of the enough of the outputted stuff back in to allow the belt to flow, and. That seems like a weird problem to have because it doesn't. I don't feel like that should be able to happen. I do wonder if it's because we had we had a the, the system stopped running for a little while because we thought we we seemed to have enough naquium um, because we hadn't increased the usage rate of it at that point so much, uh, and so so the system jammed up and stopped running, and maybe that meant that we buffered too much in these centrifuges, which they then weren't able to unload onto the belts over here. Um, because the belts were full, and that meant they weren't, and, and so because what I think, actually yes, thinking about it now, what probably happened is they outputted all of the crystal, and all of, and then all of the powder, and maybe then all of the uh, refined, or, uh, and then they, and then the belt was full, and they couldn't output output any more of the vitalic, uh, vitalic reagent, and that meant that because there was too much vitalic reagent in the machine, None of it wasn't able to run um, because they couldn't couldn't run and run that again, which meant it then wasn't able to take in any more refined and powder off the belt. And so, because it wasn't able to take in any more refined or powder, that meant the belt was stayed jammed up and, and nothing happened. So it looks like if this system stops, then it has problems. So I might need to have some sort of better buffering system. Um, I'm not quite sure how how best to do that. Oh yeah, actually yes, yes I am. What I would need to do is put in on here and here and possibly here just a loader, a chest, and another loader. Unfortunately, there isn't quite room for that because we put the we could put the loader here, then the chest, then another loader, but then there isn't room to then merge the two belts and feed them onto onto the splitter. So I'd have to put in an underground along here and run a belt through under here and, uh, and maybe down him round like this, and it'd be a bit, it'd be a quite a significant redesign. But it would fix the problem, so maybe that would be worth doing. Because the system we've got set up monitors how much uh, naquium ingot and how many naquitite crystals there are over in Norbit, and then if either of those is larger than 5,000, then it cuts off the supply of them. So at the moment, we have loads of naquitite crystals. They are currently not a problem, so we've got more than 5,000 of them. We've got 7,800 of them at the moment over in Norbit, and so this has cut off because it cuts off at 5,000, so we're not feeding those through. So the next spaceship that goes will basically be full of just naquium ingots, and that is why the system down here is running a bit slower than we used 
used to because we don't need quite as many of the crystals in order to make the ingots. However, that makes me think I should be massively increasing the amount of ingotry we do over here. Oh no, I was going to I was, actually I'll take that back. No, the limiting factor is this refined nacrotite that's pouring through here. So unless we can get more of that from somewhere, then there's no point. In, there's no point in putting more machines in because we're limited by that. And currently, that's limited by the amount we can make over here, which is limited by the amount of crushed nacrotite coming. Forget, forget everything I just said. There's no point in trying to increase that because we, the, the limiting factor is, is is not the crystals. We just have more crystals than we know what to do with, which is fine. But it means we yeah we're limited by something else. So yes, we are currently making the uh, naquium ingots as fast as we can, feeding them into, into the train to be taken up and, and so on, taken away to Norvis, because as you saw, we have a distinct shortage of them over there, and that's why every, that's why all of the uh, the deep space sciences have stopped. So, in order to get this running fast, if I wanted to make this run faster, what would I do? Well, I guess we would need, we would need as we see, we need more of the uh, refined coming through, and, well, we don't need, we don't actually seem to have too much of a shortage of powder, which is interesting. So I guess we would have, um, we'd need more of these, we'd need to turn on more of these machines, which means we would need to have more crushed nacrotite coming in here, which needs, means we need to be unloading it faster from here, which means we need to be bringing it down, well, we don't need to be bringing it down from space faster, but we do need to be make sure we're bringing it over to this planet faster so that we make sure we don't run out up there, um, this warehouse is still fairly full. Hopefully, by the time the train comes back down again, it won't have emptied. But eventually, we'll we'll have a short. We won't be bringing enough of it across. And this is why I've been saying I need to cr dig up more naquium to naquitite to crush it, and then have more ships bringing it over here in order to keep this satisfied. So because it looks like actually I can just kick it. I've I've, I've got all the belts and things in place here. I can just I could put in the belt the extra pieces of belt here. Speed this one up. Maybe put in a a top up system down here somewhere. Um, probably about in here, I, I don't know, we'll top it up somewhere anyway, uh, just to make sure we've then got enough of the uh, crushed aquatite coming through to keep these extra uh, chemical plants fed um, but that is going to need so much more to be being brought in that I don't think the system is currently going to be able to keep up with it and so hence the problems make their way back further and further up the tree as is traditional in Factorio. So I guess that's just using a lot of words to say the system here is now basically working however I'd like it to be a bit quicker. I did talk about trying to find a better way of doing this this system over here, of, of, of measuring what's going in, but I don't think I actually need to. I did make a minor tweak over here in Norbit, where now, now each of these warehouses is being unloaded using separate loaders for the crystals as for the ingots. And my theory is that if a, if a spaceship comes in with stuff in it, it's because there is less than 5,000. That means that the, the warehouses up here, that one and this pair, are can't be full because if you look over here you see 7 7.8 thousand is is this warehouse well if this warehouse had less than 5,000 in it then it would be less than half full if this warehouse had 5,000 in it it'd be completely full it, but but this one wouldn't be I put in an extra warehouse here as well uh, so there is at least going to be room for another 5,000 in the warehouses up at the top but if a ship arrives it is it absolute worst case it's going to have three full warehouses of whatever it's bringing over so in this case it, in the case of the one that's going to come over next it's probably going to have three full warehouses of ingots minus a little bit of the steel so it's going to land here it's going to unload three full warehouses it's going to fill, so could these be completely filled then they will pour a certain amount out into this warehouse which will then pour a certain amount out into this warehouse and so we'll take two warehouses worth out of that so we'll have the, the each of each of these will be about will, will be part full, maybe be about a third full. So that means at that point we'll have significantly more than five thousand uh, of, of the ingots available. So if the ship go then clears off, if it then comes back again before these warehouses have emptied, that means it must have come over with crystals because otherwise. Well, because otherwise it wouldn't have left, because it wouldn't have brought over the, the any more uh, ingots, because we've already got enough. So it must have crystals. So that means at this point it would then be unloading three warehouses worth of crystals, which would then, well, we'd be able to get some out into these warehouses. And it has occurred to me now that this wouldn't work, because this one would be completely full. I need to put in some limiters along here to say, don't put anything else in here if there is more than, if, if, if it is more than 80% full of the thing you are trying to put into it. Uh, so yeah, some, some tweaks are actually go are going to need to be made along here I haven't quite finished this idea but in theory it would then unload all of the crystals into these warehouses which would then and it'd be able to unload uh, two-thirds of its of its inventory into these warehouses which would then dribble up into here and then be passed along these belts so we would still be able to get 
either one of those through, even in the absolute worst case. So it should always work, at least once I've put the uh, the extra things on here that I was talking about then and have completely forgotten. I'll need to have a, bit of, a little bit of a think about exactly how that's going to work because I've already used both of the col colors of wire on here. Uh, so we shall uh, we shall see. But I think but it's going to, it's going to be doable. I can manage. I can get that set up and make it work without too much difficulty. And that has been about the right sort of length for an episode, I think. So I'm going to call it uh, call it here, draw a line, and under under basically what's been the deep space science and all of the stuff and shenaniganery that's been going on around that, because it's caused me a, no end of no end of headaches, of course, as is you know as is traditional. It's what we play the game for. It's it's fun, really. Um, but there's been quite a lot going on there, what with the, all of the ion stream issues and, and and trying to keep the naquium being produced fast enough. So, uh, come back tomorrow where I shall be talking about whatever, uh, what everyone else has been up to. I mean, I've talked about it a little bit because uh, Mark was doing a load of power stuff. Tristan helped me out with the uh, with the lithium and Mike was rude to me. So, you know, the others have been involved a little bit in this as well. Um, but they've also been doing other things, which I shall be talking about tomorrow. Um, as you've probably noticed, the schedule has changed now. So, we are back onto the, the what I consider to be the normal schedule after the last few months, of which were a little bit weird. And that means that the, um, the K2SE streams will be every Monday. Uh, there will be an additional stream, which at the moment is satisfactory happening on Wednesday and normally the update videos will come out on Saturday and Sunday to give me time to actually make them but this week because there's going to be a Warptorio stream on Sunday I've nudged them back to Friday and Saturday and will nudge the miscellaneous video all the way back to Thursday. Normal service will resume next week. So please make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss any of those. Uh, thank you very much for watching and I shall see you in the next one. Bye bye.